Googled free vector isometric people. And there's a set that I really like called Isometric People Free Vector Art. It's from VecCheesy.com. You can use any of these. Just check the licensing to see if you can use it in commercial work or not. Sometimes you are a little bit restricted with that. So let's just find a couple of generic people we can put into our isometric design. This is kind of interesting. It looks like they're working on something. We can download this. So we have some really interesting people here. Let's see if we can't just ungroup this. Let's incorporate her first. We can draw your own people. It takes a little bit of illustrative work. But if you wanted to draw your own people, let's get the grid back on. So you notice how she fits nicely onto the space. Her whole entire body, let's make her the right size, fits in one of these cubes. And notice how the way she is uh, lengthwise. So what you would do is you'd probably draw a little border here, just like this, that goes over the grid and you would build and draw your person that would fit nice into that area. So if you're an illustrator or you love to draw people, then that could be something for you. So now we just need to place them in a square. So you, you can place them anywhere and it would make sense, but it's kind of nice to keep them within the grid. So we have someone who wants to look like she's interacting with the piece. We could do that. Let's kind of remove a few of these lettering just so we can, that was just for practice. So we can make her look like she's interacting with the website and align her up right there into a square. Perfect. There's already shadows built into this graphic, but they don't really match up with what we're doing. We have a little bit more of a softer light source. So we just change her shadow, blur it a little bit, and maybe not have it be cast out as much. Just make it more circular, which we can do at another date. So just for now, just kind of showing you how to quickly bring these people in. We can change her shirt color, maybe bring out, instead of having that default blue, Let's see if we can't bring out some of the orange. It's kind of incorporating colors. Anytime you do infographics, you kind of want to have a color theme where you're kind of bringing out colors and other parts of the design. Of course, this green doesn't really belong, but we're just practicing, weren't we? So we could bring this, hover that over here. We can create just like this example you're seeing. You can do the same thing we've done before, but just doing isometric top instead of left to kind of build out the iPhone. Let's bring in one more person and we'll call it a day. Let's bring in the ladder, that's pretty clever. And we need to always size these down so that they are proportionate to each other. No one is gigantic compared to the other person. So just about right there. And we have a ladder here. It looks like maybe he's fixing something on here. We're gonna have to do some shadows on the, on the ladder. And there's shadows there, but we can change it so it's not as far casted. We have more of a direct top down. So all in all, this is what we created in this about an hour, hour and 20 minute project. You kind of know how to use those 3D tools to shortcut a lot of this and to create some natural highlights and shadows that would be really hard to do manually. You can always do manual isometric grids where you're drawing the boxes yourself and you're not using any of the 3D tools to create more of a flat illustration. And that might work when you're building those cities. Uh, but every once in a while, the 3D tools will help you create some of those round objects, spherical objects, and different things. And it's a lot quicker to use the 3D tools than it is to manually draw. Although manually drawing could give your own unique illustration style. And you would just use the grid and build it yourself um, using some of the methods we went over in the first lesson. So hopefully you got a lot out of the section. I wanted to bring introduce this because I really want to talk about the 3D tools. And I really wanted to go more in depth with grids because I feel like that's something students really want to know so they can know how to expand that to client work, do lots of illustrations for web landing pages. This style is very popular for infographics as well. So this has a lot of real world client applications. 